start again. My name is Matt from Loose Farm Wellness. Um, we are an artisanal hemp uh, wellness company from Stockbridge, Vermont. Um, we do everything by hand from seed all the way to finished product so you know exactly what you're getting with us. So um, do a show of hands, does everyone know what CBD is in here? Yeah? So half and half? All right, so we'll just do a quick little thing from the beginning. Um, CBD. It's everywhere now. You're seeing it in gas stations and coffee shops and restaurants and um, pharmacies, every place you're seeing it. And uh, what CBD is, it's actually um, called cannabidiol, and it is part of the hemp plant. Um, just like THC, you have CBD, um, it's, they're called cannabinoids. And they're finding that the hemp plant now has over 110 different cannabinoids that are known right now. And they're finding more every day. So there's a lot of different things going on um, in that plant and CBD is one that people have been using uh, to fight seizure disorders, um, to help with uh, sleep, uh, insomnia, um, anxiety. Uh, we're finding a lot of our customers are using it in so many different ways for so many different things. Um, so a little background on that is uh, um, really Come thinking about it, I believe it was um, Charlotte's Web. It's another CBD company from out west that uh, brought it to full attention. Uh, I believe he made his first extract for seizure disorder, and it worked very well. And there was a, this was going back about 15 years or so. So um, a lot back then, it was a whole different world. It was it was illegal, so parents were getting arrested for trying to give their kids CBD. Um, because it was a Schedule One drug at the time. Now it is not. As of this June, it was off the, um, the uh, Schedule One list, um, decriminalized, so it, it is legal product. Um, so what we do at Loose Farm, we started off uh, in 2015, we bought uh, the Loose Farm, which is um, in, on top of, it's a 200 acre farm in Stockbridge, Vermont. So the Loose family has owned the farm for over 200 years. Um, it's an old homestead, beautiful property, and the Pimentels, Joe and Rebecca, who are the owners now, uh, were, are the first non-Loose family members to own the property. Um, that being said, Loose is very excited that we opened it back up as an agricultural farm. Um, for a while, it wasn't being used at all, and if you see the farm, it's beautiful. We have a, tons of open fields, uh, and I believe in the beginning, 200 years ago, it started off as a hop farm. So uh, Vermont was one of the premier hop uh, states back 200 years ago before things got artisanal in the hop category. So um, yes, we are a family ran farm. There's about 18 of us in the entire company. Um, we do everything from seed to uh, harvesting all by hand. Um, actually, let me start right from the beginning here. So we'll start with the story. Um, so the 200 farm, uh, so ancient recipe creators, so what they decided to do with our CBD is to use old recipes um, in the natural way to bring it um, to the point that it is now. We started off by making honey. Uh, we use uh, Champlain Valley Apiaries honey. Um, well, I'm getting ahead of myself, hold on. So we, uh, in 2016, we did a partnership with a couple universities. They approached us to grow hemp for them to do medical studies with. So we grew about 150, 200 CBD plants, and after we had harvested and everything, uh, they split half of the um, crop with us. So we had you know, 75 plants that we didn't, weren't sure what exactly to do with. So uh, Becca, uh, being uh, in, in business before um, making rubs and balms, uh, she just started thinking about what we could put it in, and we thought, honey. So we, because we found a recipe where you would use a, a lipid extraction, which is uh, using a fat like coconut oil, and you extract the oils from the plant with that, and what we were doing in the farm kitchen, we were blending it right into the honey there. Um, so we weren't sure what was going to happen, but they started giving it out to all the neighbors. I was one of them. And... Uh, People, they were getting results back. People were like, holy cow, that, I feel great. No, this stuff actually works. And so they were, they were like, wow, I think we're onto something here. But, you know, it was so crude. You know, it was like a green sludge going into the honey. So 
it wasn't really appealing and um, there were so many different things that um, were uh, so many different things that were uh, well what am I trying to say so many different things that were um, yeah I sorry about that um, about uh, um, there was no consistency with it so there was a lot of issues with you know temperature and um, in amounts of product going in there was nothing measured so we had to come down with a more consistent way of doing it so they started looking in um, so they basically when we started we were doing lipid extraction which is using a fat to extract heated it up and using the fat to extract the oils from the flour and then we started looking and there's two others there's an ethanol extraction which uses ethanol to extract it another heated process and then there's supercritical co2 extraction which is what we use now I'll go into that later. So, um, you know, once they started, you know, giving it out to the neighbors and getting all this information back, they're like, all right, we're gonna start doing it. If we're gonna do it, we're gonna do it the right way. Because um, they are organic farmers for 10 years prior to growing hemp. So they have an agricultural background. So um, with that, they uh, uh, set out to find an extractor. And we found one in uh, this, this guy named Eric, he works up in, uh, Waterbury, or I'm sorry, Montpelier in Caddis is our extraction method. And he was very willing to extract it for us. It's a very expensive way of doing it. So they're like, all right, well, we're gonna have to grow more. If we're gonna do this, we started off with those 150 plants. The next year, we were up to 400 plants and it, the ball started rolling. And, you know, here we come. Loose Farm is, you know, we kept the name of Loose Farm because there's so much history in the entire state of Vermont with the Loose family. You'll see Loose Road here. Um, it, actually, you'll see Loose Road in like four or five different areas of the state, and they're all basically the same family. Um, so they've been around for a while. So we wanted to keep that history with the product because it's a beautiful story. So we uh, went with Loose Farm, and we started figuring out different ways. You know, Becca was into rubs and balms, and so we did the honey. And then once we figured out we were doing the CO2 extraction, we had a very pure, a very clean extract. Mother oil is what we use. I mean, it's a, it's a hemp extract. Um, really, there's not a lot of terminology. It's still a fairly new um, idea, CBD. So there wasn't a lot of terminology. So we call it hemp extract or mother oil because this is what we use in all our products. So we have the extract now. So there was our Honey was our first one. The extract was number two. And then she started messing around with balm. So we do a body balm, uh, a couple different rubs, and you know the ball kept rolling. People were, were getting back great um, information from all our customers of how, what they were using it for and, and how it was helping them in their daily life. So the ball just kept rolling. So now here we are today So, uh, go back up here. so um, and the, the reason they are, it's a sustainably agricultural um, farm because we also put back into the ground. So our farm also has goats, chickens, geese, horses, and all that gets put back into the ground. It's used to renew the ground every year. We're using that and we also do a cover crop with our plants. So we have clover, uh, calendula, sunflower all right into the land with the, the hemp plants so it's giving back to the ground what the hemp is taking out so now we'll just go right to our process so now i'm going to just talk a little bit about how we get our oil i kind of did briefly i'll go in a little deeper now so genetics we'll start with so we get our seeds straight from the source the man who uh, we use a, a one strain called the box sativa uh, and it comes from colorado um, there's the, the geneticist that has created this seed. Um, it's a high CBD, low THC, because there is THC in our product. We're a full spectrum product. You're getting everything from the plant, but it, it's non-psychoactive. It's at a 0.3%, so point, you know, I mean, it's, it's a low percent. Um, the, so uh, those seeds come from Colorado. We started this year with 16,000 seeds, and um, we let them grow. They grow for about 10 weeks. And when they get to a certain level, you can tell they're either going to be a male or a female. 
So you check, you go through and you sext every plant, you see if they're going to be males because you only want females out in the field. Uh, females are what make that beautiful flower. When the men, all the, all the male plants, all they think about are making seeds. So it, it, it kind of goes hand in hand with life. <laughs> Um, so you have the, the, the ladies that once we have all our plants um, sexed as females, uh, they get sent out into the fields. And uh, this year we got 8,000 plants, just over 8,000 plants that were female. Uh, we work with nine farms in total, including ours, uh, that grow for us. So what we do is we get them all started, they're all sexed on our property, and then when they're ready to get put in the ground, the people who are uh, the, the farms that are with us come and pick them up and take them to their farm, get them in the ground, and take care of them from that point on. Why we do that, we find, um, we call it the Loose Farm Collective, that with small uh, uh, plots of plants get more attention than, if, like if we put 8,000 plants in our fields, which we have the room to do, they would not get the attention that they needed, thus not making a, 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 a very high quality flower. It would be quality but not high quality. They're finding with the smaller land plots that we're getting a better quality flower from that and we're also helping out all the local farms to really keep that agricultural lifestyle going as a nice little side stash for everything because every farm we have you know one one farmer is a beef farmer another farmer does just flowers and so this is all a little side project for them that they have acreages to do and it's helping them keeping their real projects going. So we're kind of giving back to the community as well and bringing other people involved. So our cultivation, so everything is grown outdoors, in the ground, um, on our farms. And like I said, we do a cover crop in between all of our spot, uh, all of our plants. So there's uh, calendula, clover, sunflowers. I mean, you name it, there's, there's just so many different flowers. And I mean, I, I'm not really, I don't know a lot about flowers, but it's really pretty, and I know they're all giving something back to the ground there. And so once they get to a certain level, uh, usually about, see, we get them in the ground around June, about two and a half weeks ago, we started harvesting. And now that's a long process because we do it all by hand. There's no machines at work there. Um, people, including myself, are out in the fields. We take the, the big fan leaves off and we trim it branch by branch, and we bring it down to the farm where we use uh, a, a, some clippers to take off all the major leaves so we're just left with the flower, and they get hung to dry. Um, and you know, all this, like I said, all this is done by hand, so we feel that by using, uh, touching the plant so much and, and, and hands-on with it, it's giving it better quality because it is getting the attention that it needs. Uh, we, we dry it in uh, containers to right where we, um, the right uh, moisture content that we need for it. Once we have that moisture contact, it's stripped from the, um, from the uh, branches and we only use the flower. And the reason that why we only use the flower, we could use the leaves and the stems, but we feel that that would dilute the, uh, the potency of our flower because the flower is where you're getting everything from the leaves, the stem, they all have some form of CBD in there, but it's not, um, not as potent. So to get rid of all that and just use the flower, we're getting the best quality product that we can. And so leads us to our extraction. So we use the supercritical extraction, which is a uh, very expensive um, way to extract, but it also gives you the most consistency and, um, throughout the year. So you, uh, there's, once, once we use one strain and we have the supercritical CO2, um, our, cons our flavor is, and quality is consistent throughout the entire year. So uh, how this supercritical CO2 extraction works? So we bring it in and uh, so terpenes are another form of uh, cannabinoids that are in the plant. That's what the flavor, the smell comes from. It's all from the terpenes and it's very volatile. So any kind of heat attitude will burn that right off. So what, we, what they do in the lab, what Eric does, is he extracts the terpenes from the plant first. So they're contained in a, in a container, safe to get put back in later. And we fill a strong container with, uh, I, believe it's, I believe it's six pounds of flour in this container. And what it does is 
you, you pack it full and you drop the temperature in there and you slowly add the CO2 in. So when the CO2 goes in, even though it's in a gas form, when the temperature drops, the molecules of that get so close together that it acts like a water and it'll pull the oils from the, the uh, flower. So once it starts pulling, it goes into a receptor where the, the pressure is a little bit lighter. So as the oil comes down, the CO2 is released and brought back up and pulled back around to the original container to be used again. And so then you're left with our oil, which is then emptied into another container and sent to us to um, package, however we see fit. <laughs> and so then we come to our production, which takes place in Bethel, Vermont. We have a kitchen in Bethel, Vermont, and uh, uh, there we do everything. We make the, uh, well, we don't make the honey. We get our honey from Champlain Valley Apiaries, so it is a local honey, um, but we, we do all the mixing in there. So we take, uh, say, for instance, for our warming rub, which is an Arnica-based rub, we take the Arnica, the lemon, the ginger, and then the CBD as well. We put it, we have these special containers, we pour it in, and like I said, it's all done by hand. Why I say it's artisanal? Because we are taking very good time and quality on crafting these products. Uh, it is a food processing kitchen, so we are up to code. Uh, the Vermont Department of Health has certified us, so, uh, and the person who runs the kitchen is certified as well. So sh when, you know, regulations will be coming soon enough, and when that does, uh, we are set in place to, she's got this ship running super tight. Her name is Lauren, she's awesome. What's up, Lauren? Uh, so once, you know, we get all our products made, we go for testing and we do third party testing. So we send um, all our products out. We do in-house testing as well. Uh, we send our products out and uh, get tested for certain whatever levels, make sure there's no pesticides or heavy metals in there or uh, um, make sure that the THC level is at the legal le limit because you have, if it's over the legal limit, it cannot be used. Uh, so this is the most important part and when you're asking questions, always make sure if you're buying CBD that they have third-party testing so the, the uh, answers aren't skewed at all from, you know, personal use or personal testing, I should say. Um, and we also do a, a COA on every oil that comes to us before we get it. We have a certificate of authenticity that has all the, everything that is in that oil. The CBD levels, the THC levels, the CBN, CBG. Um, all the different cannabinoids that are in there uh, come on this list and it tells you what percentage. So you know exactly what you're getting. And that is available just, you know, it's, um, all our um, containers are lot coded. So if say you bought a honey that had lot 76 on there, well, you know, you would call up and say, yes, I have a honey from lot 76. Can I get the certificate of authenticity on what I'm taking? And then we'd be able to, we have that to provide to you. Um, if, if you're using a product and they won't give you a certificate of authenticity, I'd give it a second look, you know. Um, so it's, testing is super, super important. And so then come to the customer testimonials. Um, you know, I can't say, you know, we, we do not say our product is going to help you. But the, what our product has done for other people is pretty amazing. Um, I have a very super stressful, stressful job, which often leads to knots in my shoulders and even my collarbone. The pain can be uh, <laughs> debilitating, sorry, at times. Uh, this has been a lifesaver. I use it when I get up in the morning and before I go to bed at night, I bring it to work and use it in there. Uh, my day becomes overwhelming, it's amazing, and I highly recommend it. Um, just like Barbara here at the bottom, skied 111 days this past winter, I myself, I'm an avid skier, and if I didn't have our warming rub for a little uh, pain in my knee that I have, um, I never would have skied as much as I did. Uh, it really helped me to along my, make my ski days longer. So um, we are having uh, great feedback. I've never, I haven't had much uh, feedback in the negative. I can't even think of any feedback that I've had in the negative about our product. Um, but yeah, it's. Uh, um, one thing that I totally skipped that I should probably talk about is how the CBD affects, how it works in our body. Why, um, 
why are we are people feeling relief, anxiety relief, pain relief from this? So, in our body, we have this system that has only been found. I think it was probably around the mid '90s when they discovered it. They were looking into why cannabis has effects on on people. And they found this system, which they entitled it the endocannabinoid system. So it's a system inside your body that is, uh, it's basically present in everyone's body and it helps to keep the homeostasis of your body. So I look at it like Goldilocks. You know, you don't want your porridge too hot. You don't want it too cold. You want it just right. And what the CBD does is it helps to keep that, um, uh, that balance in your body level. So the endocannabinoid system is hooked to, it's got sensors all over. It's hooked to your digestive system, it's hooked to your brain, to everything. And what it does is um, just, you know, it, it really wants to keep your body in balance. If you, you know, inflammation, it tries to get that inflammation fixed. So all the receptors in there. So what the CBD does is it kind of just helps keep that focus on keeping your body aligned. Um, I find, I mean, it helps with, um, well, one, one testimony that I have is of my own is my son. Uh, my son's five years old and he's been taking this product for two years for seizure disorder. And uh, he had, was diagnosed when he was three. Um, we were at Dartmouth, so the doctor said to us, you know, we have two options for you to, um, for med medicine for him. And they both were scary, to say the least, you know, there's, the side effects were, one was autism, one was liver failure, and to give a three-year-old something that may cause his liver to failure, fail is, wasn't in our cards. So I said to the doctor, you know, our friends just started a CBD company. We'd really like to give this a shot first. And um, he said to us, he's like, well, I can't tell you to give it to him, and I can't tell you not to give it to him. He's like, the only thing I can tell you, it won't hurt him. So give it a shot. If he has his next seizure, we'll get him on medicine. He's been two years now, seizure free, but without any medicine. So that's my personal, you know, feeling why, you know, I trust, trust this product. And um, really it's, it's an amazing, it's amazing thing to me because the reason I joined this company was that reason in, by itself. Um, the fact that I, I've got this joy now from, you know, not having to worry for the last two years about my son is is great and I want other people to feel the same way. So I'm out here trying to push our product, trying to get people to be op open to CBD. Um, I always say uh, it's, not a, it's not a magic bullet. It's not gonna fix everything. It might not fix anything, but it is worth a shot. And um, you know, I'm, uh, I really think if you're taking this internally, I highly suggest talking with a doctor about it because uh, with other medications that you might be taking, you don't know how it'll react because there really isn't too much uh, information out there about that. So you do want a doctor that would be on board with this. I mean, I know, again, from personal experience, my mother um, is on blood thinners and um, what one uh, article I read said that uh, CBD can also make blood thinners work better, so you wouldn't need a high dosage. But you really have to regulate that with your doctor. But personally, I don't trust my mother's doctor, so I said, I said to him, I'm like, I don't want her. She doesn't take it internally. She uses the rub for her arthritis, which is giving her plenty of relief. And, um, you know, but you really do. You need to have a doctor that will, um, will be on board with you and, and help you to dial in the right amount of everything that you should take. So um, answer, before I go over some of our products, I would love to see if there's any questions that you could do. Yes? I'm really interested in, so if you're using the rug, mm -hmm. if you have a major pain, is it, how does that work? I mean, does it, it like, if I, like yesterday, I put on a um, tiger, tiger bomb. Tiger bomb, yes. Mm -hmm. But I don't actually, um, I, does it enter your bloodstream? I guess it's a question. Well, um, your skin is your biggest receptor on your body, so it does enter through your skin. Not, um, 
not to a strong point. I mean, you, when you're putting on a rub, it's getting more localized. So if you're using it on your hands, you're going to feel it in your hands. It's not going to be a whole body thing. You're going to feel it where you're putting it on. Um, you know, a lot of the rubs since we do, like our body balm is a great moisturizer rub. So people use it sore elbows and, you know, they'll, it'll moisturize their elbows as well as give them a little, um, a little uh, help on, on with some pain. Um, I find the, you know, being more localized, you could really, I, I mean, I don't think it's going to get into your bloodstream. It may a little bit, but nothing, nothing like taking it internally, putting a couple drops under your tongue and getting into your system that way. Localizing, you're just localizing the spot that you're looking really to get relief. We have another question, but yeah. go ahead, somebody else. Yes. I just appreciated you repeated the questions. Oh, absolutely. Questions. Absolutely. My other question is, I was just reading about um, histamine intolerance, and um, one of the things I read, you know, a random posty was talking about full spe spectrum versus isolate, mm -hmm. and it's her opinion that full spectrum aren't isn't good if you have a histamine intolerance. Do, well, do you have any? I don't. So it's pretty esoteric question. Right. Um, so her question was. Uh, um, difference between isolate and full spectrum hemp and uh, a histamine, you said a histamine? Apparently she thinks that actually if you have a his histamine intolerance it can cause anxiety, but she's saying that CBD, or CBD I think this is very specific, you know, but if you have a histamine intolerance, a full spectrum, spectrum hemp could cause more anxiety rather than, so well, I don't know anything about it. I, you know, I, the, the histamine thing, I, I have no clue on that. I, I definitely can't answer that. I can't explain the difference between like an isolate and the full spectrum. Okay. So, um, so CBD is just one part of the hemp plant. So full spectrum, you're getting all 110. So, you know, there may be something in there that, uh, that may react that way because you are getting a more broad spectrum of, of uh, cannabinoids and terpenes than you are with the isolate. The isolate, so it was like CBD is uh, <laughs> just an isolate here. It's like uh, a guy with a guitar, okay? And then if you're looking at the uh, full spectrum, it's a full band, horns and all. So, you know, the sound is, is bigger, it's better, but you're still, and you're still enjoying that single guitar because it's, it's good music, but that full band is a whole different experience. So um, you are getting more, and that's the one thing with full spectrum. Uh, all of those different terpenes and, and cannabinoids that are in there, it, you know, it very well could. I don't have the, the research on that, but I would like to look that up just to see. Thank so, you. Absolutely. Thank you. Yes? Is this for arthritis? Is this for arthritis was the question. Um, it can be. We have a lot of people that use this for arthritis. My mother, like I said, is one of them. She has terrible arthritis in her hands. Mm -hmm. And our warming rub and our cooling rub have both worked with her very well. Uh, our warming rub has got, is an Arnica-based rub, so it's got Arnica, lemon, ginger, plus our CBD. So you are getting a double whammy with that Arnica. Um, and then the calendula is a good skin toning uh, flower. So, uh, between that and the peppermint that's in there that gives that kind of cooling effect has worked both for my mother and for many of our customers. Have you talked about price at all? Have I talked about price? Yeah. Uh, not yet, but I do have, I have sheets and everything for you, so you can check it all out. I'll, 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 I'll make sure everyone walks with a, um, a pamphlet on our, um, on our products and the pamphlet on the farm as well. So you have some, um, something to reference. Sure. Yes. And are the products available in any stores locally? Yes, locally, um, for sure. There, uh, right around here, we have it at Chef's Market down in downtown uh, Randolph. Um, going down, I mean, we're just in Bethel, so the Bethel Sandwich Shop. Uh, going into Killington, there's places. I mean, we're all over the place, but we could you could also buy online as well, and we do ship um, everywhere in the United States. So there are many ways to, to get it. Yes? You mentioned for sleep. How mm -hmm. is that adjusted and are there side effects? Um, well, uh, my, a lot of people do use it for sleep. Uh, 
the ashwagandha honey. We have uh, two honeys that we do. We do our regular honey, which is just the Champlain Valley apiaries honey, and we also have this ashwagandha honey, which is uses uh, a powdered root of uh, the ashwagandha plant, uh, which is uh, the ashwagandha is known for um, helping with sleeplessness and anxiety as well. So a lot of people put that in a cup of tea with a teaspoon of honey, and that helps calm them down. Uh, side effects, I, every, everybody's body is different. So to know what exactly kind of side effects there could be, I mean, when I take it, I have no side effects. I just, I mean, I'm drinking it right now. So <laughs> I always like a little honey in my tea. Um, but yeah, the side effects, that, that's really a personal thing. I, I, I can't really talk about what side effects there are uh, on it, but I know my wife sleeps very well when she has a cup of the ashwagandha tea. So my family is a very big practitioner of, of our products, so I use them a lot when I'm talking to people just because that is my personal experience with it and, and it's nothing but positive. So, um, but like I said, the, the, the honey is usually what I see people using the most um, for that. Yes? There is always a potential. There's a, always a potential conflict. That's why I always say you must, it, it's, if you are taking medication, I highly, highly suggest talking to a, your doctor and, and being on board with him as well to monitor things. Um, like I said, there's not a lot of, um, I mean, there is a lot of things happening now with uh, studies on medications. Um, they really haven't been, pu too many that are published right now, but uh, I, I mean, I'm not going to take that risk and say, oh yeah, there's not going to, nothing's going to happen. Like I know something could happen with any kind of medication that you're taking if you're adding a substance in that you don't know. So highly suggest talking to a doctor about it for sure. Yes. The flower, yeah. Um, so yeah, actually, we actually have someone right now who, um, who approached us about three weeks ago wanting all the stems that we have to uh, make paper. So we, right now, we're, we're, we're just giving it to him and to see what he could do. Because I mean, right now, this is a, this is a really, really amazing time for, um, for hemp products and, and different ways of using it. Because really, the hemp plant for years has been used for, for building materials. And, and paper and, and twine and everything. And, and now I think people are starting to see the potential of what could happen, you know, like to make paper, how many acres of trees do you need to make one set of paper? And then, and then you have to let that grow back. Whereas you could get double the amount in half the growing season and a, and a third of the growing season with the hemp. So there's a lot of things that are happening, you know, industrial hemp, I, if you notice, I mean, driving around the state, there are hemp fields everywhere, far and wide, far and wide. And most, a lot of those are going towards building materials. Um, right now they're doing a, a hemp creep. Uh, so there's really not a lot of waste with that. And everything that we don't give him, like, because we're, you know, we're limbing everything. All the stocks are still in the ground. Those get mowed, those get mowed back into the ground for next season. It's just another amendment to the, to the ground. For us too, yes. And then that's that's the thing. The processing is there's not that many process. So the question was, where are people uh, processing their hemp? Um, lucky for us, we have a process. Uh, you know, we had someone from for three years now, and he is 100% our processor. There's there's about three or four processors now in the state. And what people are finding with, with all the hemp that's out there is they don't know what to do with it. You know, they put it in the ground and figuring, well, they're gonna do something with it, but to process it is a big ordeal. And most of the processors are full. So some people are going out of state um, and some people I don't even know. I have people coming up to me all the time at demos saying, hey, I've got 500 plants of hemp in the ground. Do you want them? And we're like, no, no, thank you. <laughs> We use our own, so um, you are finding that uh, you know people are having a hard time figuring out what to do with it when it's done. And yes. You 
Um, yeah, they can. Um, they could do like one or two frosts. Um, nothing too serious, but um, like I said, we're still harvesting right now. Uh, we've had about three frosts on the farm. Small frosts, they, have, they weren't too bad, but they won't, those are very hardy plants. So one or two frosts, I don't think will, will harm them, but I mean, any frost is tough on a plant, but um, they could survive. Yes, sir. Double blind? <coughs> what, taste test? Studies. Oh, studies. Um, that I'm not 100% sure, and I know we haven't done. We are doing one study of our own on um, uh, uh, blood tests. On, um, so we have one, uh, one uh, sales rep who, she's, a, she's, a, she's an angel. She doesn't drink, she doesn't smoke, she doesn't do anything out of the, on, on the edge. And, so she took double the recommended dosage for 30 days and went for a CDL test, uh, blood test, and she showed up negative on that. So, I mean, we are doing some of our own testing. Now she's doing a 90-day follicle test to see if it'll test for THC levels, which so far there has not been any. So that's one of the testings we've done is that. But we do, we do test the oil, our soil gets tested, and then we also do the third-party testing too for our product. Else? Yes? Um, you mentioned at the beginning that in the extraction process, the terpenes are taken out. And yes. Added back in. Is only the CBD extracted, or you mentioned the CBN and some of the other chemicals? Right, uh, everything so, is extracted. So do you view your product as full spectrum? 100%, yes. Yeah, we are a full spectrum product. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But like I said, and, and there are the trace amounts, but so far, We've had, you know, double the recommended doses for 30 days and it came clean on a THC test. So, you know, it's, even though it's full spectrum, you're not getting that, you know, positive testing. There's a story in the news, not your product, another product from the state, that a man was taking just a row mm -hmm. and um, he took a blood test for a, um, a job and it, it turned out to be THC in it. And so he failed that test. I, I, you know, if he says he's just using a rub, I, I have a hard time believing he wasn't, he wasn't using the devil's lettuce. <laughs> I mean, that's just my personal opinion, you know, like, I mean, if you're using something externally for it to get into your blood system like that, I mean, unless he's using a straight THC rub, that's, yeah, I don't, you know, if, if he said he was using our product, I would, oh, well, I know, I know, but if he said he was, I wouldn't, I would, I would fight that to the end, that, but, you know, it's, it's, it's a possibility. I don't see that, I, I mean, I can't see that happening using a rub, but who knows, weird things have happened. Right. Anything else for question-wise, or, yes, there. Well, you know, here, here's the one thing about the CBD world right now. It's like the Wild West. Um, there's a lot of places out there that, I mean, there is no regulation right now on CBD. That should be coming in 2020. They said there's a lot of regulations coming out, which is good for us because it'll make the cream rise and it'll weed out a lot of, pardon the pun, will weed out some of the other um, companies there. Um, but, yeah, I'm a... I'm sorry, I lost the question as I was going. Strength. strength, yeah. So, um, so you know, we, we do have different strength bottles, but they're just diff different. The, the strength is the same. It's just different amounts in each bottle. Um, so, you know, and that stays consistent through the year, and you would see that with our COAs. Um, you, you would see that, you know, it's the same level straight across the board. Uh, when you're doing other forms of extraction, uh, either the lipid extraction or an ethanol extraction, there can be variations in strength too, because um, it's not as controlled. Do you have any other questions? Well, uh, let me see. Um, let me go over some of our products um, as well. So since we're here, um, I'll go over our line. So obviously the first one we have is the honey, which is our, um, The honey is uh, Champlain Valley Apiaries honey infused with 
um, our CBD, the full spectrum. So there's 360 milligrams in this, which we always recommend starting low and slow. You know, it, it takes time for the CBD to build up. And you know, you, you don't need to start high if you think, oh, I, I need more, I'm in a lot of pain, or I have so much anxiety, and you wanna start, just you know, start low and see if that works for you. If it works for you, awesome. Then you could stay low. So 10 milligrams is the dosage that we say in here and um, that's about 36 teaspoons. So well, each teaspoon is 10 milligrams. There's 36 teaspoons in here. So this is um, my, one of my favorite products. And then we also have the ashwagandha honey as well, which is the same honey, but we use the ashwagandha root in there. And ashwagandha root has been known as well for um, helping with sleeplessness, anxiety. So this is what most people use if they're looking for uh, a little bit better rest, people will tend to lean more towards this for that. And then um, our extracts, we have our, this is our, um, our mother oil, the extract. So it's a beautiful, nice golden color. And that's like the kind of the color you want to see in this, you know, green, like it's, there's some stuff that looks just really bad, but this is like a beautiful color. and. 0.25 milliliters, so this is marked all the way down. The 0.25 milliliters, this bottom line here, it's right about, right about there, you can see it, is a dosage right there. So that's 12 and a half milligrams of CBD. So, so would that be like what you have given your son for his? Yes. Yeah. So what we were doing is um, um, for the first year, it was about 50 milligrams a week, 10 milligrams a day um, in, some, he likes elderberry syrup, so we would put it in there and he would just drink the elderberry syrup. We're down to about 20 milligrams a week. So, um, so 10, um, 10 in, in the beginning. And then if he's getting like, a, uh, you know, some of the stuff that he has would, would be brought on by uh, fevers or lights. Um, so if we're, you know, we, I'm a music fan as well, so taking him to some concerts, we always give him a little extra dosage of it. Or if he's starting to get a fever, if he's not feeling well, We'll give him a little bit extra, but right now we're kind of weaned him down for that as well. Um, same thing goes for animals too. Um, a lot of people like this the extract for their pets. It they tell us that it really, it, uh, it helps with uh, separation anxiety or you know Fourth of July fireworks. Uh, Catamount Pet Supply in Rutland is probably one of our biggest um, uh, wholesalers because you know people love their animals and all these products are safe for dogs. Um, I use the honey with my dog because he has like a lot of allergies. He's a golden, he's got all the goopy eyes. But being a local honey as well, I mix that in with his food. Um, it helps with his allergies. So he doesn't get all the goopy eyes and stuff. So it can be used for animals just as well as humans. Do you know how much you would give a 10 pound I have a very stressed up cat. Yeah, um, I, don't, I don't know, I, I mean, there's, so I listen to, I get a lot of my information, there's a, a CBD talk podcast, all right? And she talks to a lot of vet veterinarians and it's full of information. So much better than I could explain. Um, yeah, that, that C the CBD talk podcast, um, she goes in she, uh, with uh, uh, dogs, cats, she has veterinarians from all over the country and it's really full of information. So I would highly check that out. Um, so, and then also going on our products again, we have our balm. Oh, wait, this is our oil. So, this is a straight coconut oil um, and our infused CBD. Um, our body balm has uh, sunflower oil, cocoa butter, um, beeswax, coconut oil, and then the hemp extract and vitamin E oil. So, this is the stuff that is really good for moisturizing, and some people do get a lot of relief from that. And then we have my favorite, the warming rub. This is the uh, this is what got me personally through ski season. Um, uh, I have a little tendonitis in my knee, so before I go out, I would always put that on, and just you know, in about 20 minutes, I'd feel good and my my day would extend. And then afterwards, before I go to bed, I'd rub it on again, and you get a you know, it, it definitely helped me for pain on my knee for sure. So I noticed you didn't mention the prices. Oh, I've got all the prices right here. Yeah. 
Here, I'll, let, let me pass these out. Thank you. You got it. So, and also what I'll hand out for you guys, too, is a little information on the farm. There you go. This is a little fold that has Thank our you. extraction method from start to finish in there. A little bit about the collective, which is our uh, nine farms that, that uh, grow for us. external. So right, you, but that's all, any rub is absorbed through the skin. skin right. Mm -hmm. right. Um, yeah, I would definitely be a little bit cautious about that. Um, like I, I said to my mom about taking it internally with her blood thinner. You know, if, you, if you don't have a doctor on board, I would not suggest using it. But this is like you know, so, so you list all the ingredients? Yes. Yes. Everything is listed. And we try to keep it simple. Uh, usually no more than five ingredients in one of our in one of our products. but And also, just uh, to let you guys know as well, uh, this crop for 2019 that we just um, that we just harvested is also Vermont certified organic. So it took us three years to get to that point, but we are, this year's crop is certified organic too. So there has been no pesticides or anything used on these plants. Lots of ladybugs. Lots of, yes? No, no. Um, we we start fresh seeds every year. We get from um, the person that we get the seeds from. He he puts aside those seeds for us every year. We like to get them from the source, so we know they're on the up and up. Because you know there could be cross pollination that happens, so we don't want to use seeds that. I mean, yeah, we could make the seeds, and they're probably the same seeds, but I'd rather go to the source. Um, yeah, yes, um, yeah. You, you know, he does a couple strains, this, this is his strain, he came up with this strain, the Box Sativa. How do you spell that? Uh, B-E-O-X, and then Sativa. Well, anybody else have any questions or anything, or? Because we could go right on to sampling right now. Yes, sir. Is there a guarantee of female sex seeds for male plants? Um, you're, you're usually looking at a 50% rate of male to females. Um, we were right around 51% this year, so. Is this seed greatly expensive? Um, it's, it's not the cheapest, but it is the best quality. Um, the first year, we had a couple different, um, uh, you know, 2015, we had a couple different areas with a couple different varieties of seeds set up to see what um, worked best in the Vermont atmosphere, you know, in the ground. Um, so we found that the Boxativa gave us the best flower with the conditions in Vermont. So 
that's why we stuck with that. And, and then also is a great consistency too. Anybody else? Well, yes. Um, in my experience, doctors really don't know much, and especially if they're related to hip root, they don't say anything that they may know because hip root is um, related to the feds. Um, so how, you know, we should talk to our doctors, of course, but in my experience, mm -hmm. I know a great deal more than they do. Right. So do you have any advice on how any of us can help our medical people learn more to bring them up to, up to, up to, up to speed? Up, right. Um, you know, I... I to be honest, I think really um, just talking to them about it and showing showing the, co the concern you have about it, or not the concern, but the you know, concern for them not knowing. You know, um, I think that I think with the more people that are bringing CBD into doctors' offices with questions, the more doctors are going to want to know what's going on. You know. Sure, and there are studies out there, and WebMD, I'm sure, has plenty of studies. Um, there are some, there are, um, the USA, well, I don't know if it's, I can't think of the name of the company, but there are a ton of studies out there that are doing work right now, and you could find them online. Um, you could, and usually if you push, it, you don't put in like CBD, put in cannabidiol, and, and you'll see a whole slew of reports and documents of, uh, um, that people are, are working on right now. I really, it's, it's up to them to, to do the research. But you know, they have to kind of get that little push to, to, to get to that point. Yes? Oh, great. Awesome. Some are on board, yeah. Them all, yeah, exactly. That's a lot of them are just like, just go for it. Why not? But you know what though? They they really do. The, the doctors are starting to, to do more research because this is becoming an everyday thing for everybody. And and I think the less medication that, that people have to take, you know, it, if this is what helps them to take less medication, then by all means, um, the doctors need to look at it. Um, yes. Right, and that's that's all with the study going in on the endocannabinoid system. That all has that's like the CB1 and CB2 receptors in your body. I believe the CB1 receptor is. You're not doing studies. No, no, we aren't doing the studies. Um, we yeah, we don't have. I mean, we're a mom and pop company right now. We're we're work. You know, we'll we'll let the the doctors and who know what so what. Right, well, yes. Yeah, everything you know that's out there, um, all the research since that's being done, that's what, that's what we go by. And, um, I mean, that's really what anyone can go by. I, unless you have the money to put up, you know, there are probably, I guarantee out in Colorado, there's a couple of CBD companies that are putting time and effort into research, for sure. And they, I mean, that's just something that you'd have to look online and see who is doing it and, and how they are doing it. Anybody else? All right, well, I appreciate you listening to me rant for a little bit here. Um, I do have, if anyone is interested in trying any samples of anything, I'm gonna stick around here for a while and um, we can talk a little bit up close. And like I said, if you wanna try anything, I'm here to let you try. All right? Thank you, thank you. Absolutely, thank you so much.